Clip Studio Paint has many tools and brushes that artists can use to speed up their workflow, but today we're going over a very powerful and honestly under-discussed panel within your workspace, the Layer Property Panel. All right, all right, it's not the most flashy looking tool within Clip Studio Paint, but stay with me here. If you can't find the Layer Property Panel, go to Window and click Layer Property. If it has a check, it means it's already visible in your workspace, and if it's off, it means it's not currently visible. Clicking on it will make it appear again. The Layer Property panel is split up into two separate sections, the Effects and the Expression Color. The Expression Color settings changes how many kinds of colors can be handled on a single file or layer. You can change the Expression Color on individual layers, or before creating your canvas you can change the settings for the file so all the layers you create within it will have the same Expression Color settings. But why do we care about the Expression Color? What does it even do? By default, every Clip Studio file you make will have the color setting on every layer. Wow, crazy! Nothing changed! Congratulations! You can draw and paint with all 16.77 million colors, pretty much all the colors that the human eye can distinguish. Did you need to know that? No! Did I tell you anyways because I wanted to show off that I read the Clip Studio Paint manual multiple times for these tutorials? Yes! Let's talk about the monochrome expression setting. It only allows two colors on the canvas, black, white, and the void! <clears throat> I mean transparency. This setting is important to turn on for artists who want to print monochrome manga in comics, or if you just really, really hate the color gray for some reason. <laughs> You'll notice that painting with any brushes that have anti-aliasing, these gray pixels that show up when you draw a line to make it appear smooth, only the color black will appear on the canvas. If you want to create some fun shadow effects with the monochrome layer, merge your artwork, duplicate it, set the top layer to monochrome, then click Ikli Expression Color of Preview. Switch the layer back to color, and finally, to remove the white from the layer, go to edit and click convert brightness to opacity. Now you can change the shadow color and use it however you like. And for those artists who love the saying that life is not always black and white, it is a million shades of gray, meet the gray expression color setting. It doesn't include a million shades of gray, but rather 256. Sorry to disappoint. However, it does allow for a bit more wiggle room when it comes to creating manga or comic panels in a grayscale style. You can technically paint with color, but it'll always appear with the equivalent tone of gray. Quick note, if you decide to change the expression color on a layer, it won't add any additional colors onto what you've placed. For example, if you swapped from a monochrome layer to a grayscale layer, it won't add any anti-aliasing unless you paint on the layer after the change settings. Alright, alright, I've talked your ear off about three settings. We're going to take a bit of a break from the thrilling world of black, white, and grayscale to jump into some layer effects. The secondary part of the layer property panel, starting out with the border effect. The border effect is simple, but one of the most versatile tools you need to know how to use. From thumbnail borders, text effects, stickers, sprite outlines, and it can even be its own drawing assistant. I use the border effect all the time, and it's so easy to use. With a click of a button, it will use anything you have placed in a layer and create a border around the outside. Sometimes it doesn't always give the best results because there are two things to keep in mind. Number one, if you're using a texture brush. Like I said, it uses the art on the layer you selected and, and outlines it exactly, which means textured brushes will create a bumpy effect. And number two, during the art process, you might have left very small pixel fragments on your canvas and the effect is picking it up. You can fix both of these errors by erasing around your art, but sometimes that takes way too long. I personally suggest selecting all of the elements of your artwork, inverting the selection, and then increasing the selection slightly. Once you've done that, you can hit delete or click the, the delete button in the selection toolbar. You can also create interesting shapes by taking a larger brush, adding a border effect to the layer, and then drawing afterwards. If you want to turn the shapes you made into line art, make sure the stroke color is black and the fill color you've been using is white. Then hit Convert Brightness to Opacity. After that, you can change the line art color to whatever you like. You can also change the outline to be a watercolor effect. Keep in mind 
find this can be very process heavy on your computer, so be sure to be careful with it. The range slider kind of changes the width of the watercolor effect. The higher it is, the larger the border will be. Opacity changes the transparency, and darkness changes the luminosity of the border. Finally, blurring width changes how much blur is added. The best way i found to use the watercolor effect is for painting the underparts of, of bushes and trees since it creates a slight shadow behind everything. It could be used to also create a drop shadow effect, but I prefer using the normal outline with a duplicate of the image below and blurring the result afterwards. It just gives me more control over the final results. There are so many things you can do with the border effect, and I highly suggest playing around with it and seeing how many different ways you can use it. If you want to layer multiple border effects onto one image to create a sticker effect, create a white border that you like the sizing of, rasterize the image, and then add another border effect on top to create a black outline. Keep in mind, once you've rasterized a border effect, you can't make any changes afterwards, so keep a copy of the original image just in case you want to try again with different settings. Alright, let's talk about tones. Although I'm no professional when it comes to the various rules and tricks to applying tones into an illustration like a manga artist, there are plenty of tips on the Clip Studio page from other artists that you can check out if you're interested in that. I do, however, use them to create simple and easy backgrounds for my illustrations. There are two major types of tone layers you should pay attention to. The first being a proper tone layer, indicated by a fill layer, mask, and tone icon. The second being one you create from the layer property panel, which just has the tone icon. Proper tone layers brought onto the canvas through the material panel won't allow you to paint any additional colors onto the layer, while ones created through the layer property panel will allow you to draw as many different shades as you want onto the same layer. I find that the most simple beginner's exercise to understand the settings of a tone layer is to take a filled shape tool, create some scattered shapes, and then duplicate it. Then turn the top layer into a tone and change the density settings from use color of image to use brightness of image. Now you should be able to see the layer color underneath and your tone. If you want to change the color, you can create a new layer above everything and fill it with whatever color you like. This method will allow you to continue to change the tone texture as many times as you want without flattening the image. Alternatively, if you're looking to just add some simple textures to an image you've already made, you can drag a preset tone from the material panel, set the frequency, click on the layer mask, and hit delete on your keyboard. Now you can take any brush you like and paint on the areas you'd like to, the tone to show through. Once you're done, you can create a new layer above it and clip it to your tone layer. From here, you can paint the tones any color you like. One of the major reasons you want to use a proper tone layer versus a tone layer created through the layer property menu is consistency. If you paint with multiple tones on a layer with tone effects, it will layer and create an inconsistent effect, which can be fantastic if you know what you're doing with it. Otherwise, it can be really annoying to edit a tone and not be able to tell which color shade you used on certain sections. Essentially, a tone's density is based on the colors you've placed onto the layer. The darker the color is, the more visible the tone will be, and vice versa. Tone layers you get from the material panel are one consistent color versus having multiple on one layer. As you change the density settings in the layer property panel, it'll change the entire tone instead of only sections of it. All right, let's talk about the layer color effect. At its core, it's a very simple effect. When turned on, it changes the layer into a monochromatic version based on the color selected in the effect panel. I use this tool all the time when it comes to creating illustrations. For example, in this illustration, I put down the, the base colors I want to use before getting into line art. Why? Doing this helps me send rough drafts to clients, and it also helps me see the differences between objects in my image. I also use the layer color effect to make my draft tone one solid color that is less distracting to look at as I do my line art on top. Additionally, I use this effect to create a backdrop of a character. This is great for creating that extra bit of depth into your art. Something that is commonly forgotten with this tool is that you can actually set two different colors. By clicking the plus icon, you'll be able to see a sub color you can change. You can also use this tool to create fun overlays and color adjustments for your art. Try it out! I'm sure you'll be able to create lots of fun effects with this. <sighs> So far, we've covered a ton of information, but you've 
might have noticed I intentionally skipped over one of the effects, the Extract Line feature. That's because it's exclusive to people who have the EX version of Clip Studio Paint, so instead of jumping into it now, I want to cover some alternatives for people who own the Pro version. Sometimes I'll even use this method instead of the Extract Line feature in the AX version because of how nice it can look. Step 1. Take a 3D model or image you want to create lines for. I'll be using a 3D model myself. Since I'm using 3D, I'll have to rasterize my layer. After that, create a duplicate of your layer, name one color, and the other line. This will just make the process easier. Turn off the visibility for the color layer, and with the line layer selected, go to Filter, Effect, and click Artistic. Once you're in the Artistic menu, click on the option that says Lines Only. Once you're satisfied with the result, click OK. Depending on the image you use, you'll have to tinker with the settings and the image itself to get the best results. Additionally, if you want to work in grayscale, you can make another copy of the base image, set it to monochrome, and remove the white like we discussed earlier. This will create a shading layer based on your image's shadows. If you don't like the results, click the plus icon and then change the color threshold slider. Now we're going to jump into the extracting line effect for the EX version. Extracting lines from images, also known as LT conversion, is an EX exclusive feature. For the most part, it's pretty straightforward. You can either right click and select the option convert to lines and tones, or you can use the extract line icon in the layer property menu. I've talked about this feature before in my ultimate guide to 3D models, but if you haven't seen that tutorial before, here's what you should know about this feature. Using this tool, you can easily create lines for webtoon and comic backgrounds. No matter which method you use, you might sometimes get random pixel fragments. For those cases, I suggest going to filter, correction filter, and click remove dust. This will get rid of all those random pixel fragments. Doing this is actually much faster than erasing all of them yourself. Note, be sure to have remove dust from transparency on, or this filter won't do anything to the image. You can also use adjust line width in the correction filter dropdown menu to make lines thinner or thicker depending on what you want to accomplish. Finally, we'll talk about one last effect in the layer property panel. Right now, you can't see it. Why? That's because it's specific to one type of layer, image materials. For the most part, you'll be using this setting for textures. It's called overlay texture. <laughs> it controls how intense a texture will appear on your canvas. If you want a texture to only affect one layer, you can either clip it or place it inside a folder with the contents you want it to overlay underneath. And that's it! <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's definitely one of the more simple but also really complex sides of Clip Studio Paint. It's very fun to talk about these things and I'm so thankful that you stuck around until the end. And with that, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye! Bye! -bye. Bye. <laughs>